Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of On The Paint Table. This is my weekly show where you see what I got done, what I'm working on, and what is coming up. So, more Rogue Trader stuff painted for my Stargrave campaign this week. Uh, I finished off the last two models of Inquisitor Hess's Warbands. I got lots of options now to hire different models. Um, and like just tried all the different like soldier types and crew types you can have. I finished off two more of the Unexpected Guests, which is the um, sort of like rogues gallery of bad guys who can show up. I have an Armored Pirate Trooper and a Bounty Hunter. And then my scenario models for Scenario 2, which was the um, scavenge mission where you try and go after a downed spaceship. My Ryakin, who are supposed to be like Minox from Star Wars, they're like winged bat creatures. I tried desperately to find some old Necromunda Ripper Jacks to do it with, but then I basically just went down to, eh, they're tiny gene stealers instead. And I used some uh, little bitty gene stealer squigs that I had like a whole bag of uh, to represent the Ryakin instead. So that's what got painted. Uh, oh, and my bounty hunter, who is the tally man. Um, I got some stuff assembled to try out Planet 28 next week. Basically all of the scenario stuff required to play through the Death in the Periphery scenario. My next scenario miniature, um, which is gonna be the Sewer Dragon, which is my amble for Rogue Trader. I've reached level two now with everybody in my Curse City campaign, so it's time to paint Torgilius because he can start showing up in the um, the encounter track. And I got an incredibly generous gift um, from one of my personal hobby heroes, Paul Shotton, in the mail this week, which I'm going to show you guys too. But I'm I'm like beyond excited about. Uh, I also got some new stuff from CB, the new uh, Militaries box set, the action packet to paint up, which I'm, I'm pumped for. New Pulp Alley 2nd Edition Star Set, which I'll talk about in a minute. And then Forbidden Psalm, which is an indie game uh, based on the Mork Bork, I, Mork Borg RPG um, that is like so meta and really cool and I'm actually really pumped for. So I'll show you what I got done and what is coming up. So here's my painted stuff for this week. I finished off my last two Warband members. Um, I have a server who's going to be my, uh, I think he's called a chipper or a... He's the dude who opens physical, like, objectives. He's pretty rad. Uh, he's an old talisman timescape cyborg um, who I painted up in, like, a variety of browns and washes and stuff and then finished off. He's got, like, these weird kind of... It looks like a Doctor Who extra. He's got this kind of weird, like, head plate where part of his head's been rebuilt. I was really tempted to paint him, like, Venture Stein from the Venture Brothers. The top half of his body's been sewn back to the bottom half of his body, so you don't even know if it's all his original bits. And he's got like a weird little pistol thing built into his arm and a grabber claw and like kind of half a bionic leg. He's got kind of like a Mad Max leg brace thing going on. Um, so yeah, I painted him up for my, my warband. And then of course, one of e Prince Ariel's Raiders, the original color scheme for Eldar from the Rogue Trader book. I painted up a uh, sniper, which is an old Eldar Ranger from the Rogue Trader era with a cool like scope and stuff and like a nose tube and a weird tiger striping and stuff on his helmet. Really cool model. Classic Eldar with a green las gun. Long las. Uh, these are my Ryakins, four of these classic um, Gene Stealer like squigs. They're basically just tiny Gene Stealers. Um, they're wonderful miniatures, but I painted them up to have, because basically when you're assaulting the spaceship, these guys were in it and have like infested the area and kind of like a pitch black thing happens where they slowly start to wake up and chase you away. Uh, this is the Tally Man. He's a classic uh, Nurgle champion from the Warhammer line with the techno upgrades. You can see he's got this weird like rebreather and stuff. I based him in, oh geez, I think the uh, Agoras Dunes, something like that, <laughs> something like Agoras Dunes. Uh, one of the like beiges, like the Citadel beiges, then gave him um, a base coat of like a light green. I think it's uh, Warp Fire, Warp Black Green, uh, whatever the old Bilious Green uh, is called now on his um, tubes and stuff. Metallics are just done in Iron Blaster. Uh, and then a various like bunch of brown washes. I think it's Bugman's Glow for the skin. And then I kind of mixed a bit of like turquoise into the skin to give him his weird melted, um, what should I call it, Toxic Avenger face there on the right. Uh, and then, yeah, and then he finished painting him up um, by just doing some highlights by blending like various beiges in and then silvers and stuff into the, the metallics to get him done. But great miniature, tons of character. And he's my, you count coup with your bounty hunters in this game so when they kill the first the first thing they kill they, they leave so he's doing the the papa nurgle's tally basically and i wanted him to be you know like a cool a cool like thematic model to house my bounty hunter and then this is my armored trooper i went with the most like opposite i could for my imperial space marine that i have painted this is an old chaos renegade i love that he's a beaky first of all i love that his head is somehow like drooped into his chest and I love that he randomly has a gene stealer arm. <laughs> like, it's either a gene stealer arm or a horror arm. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be a gene stealer arm. 
Um, but this is a classic old Citadel Chaos Renegade with a bolter, and he's perfect for a pirate trooper. I did him up in some kind of like, he could be anything. He could be Zine. She could be like, he could be a thousand sun in the old classic gold and red. He could be corn. Um, I just wanted him to be sort of, or like Slanesh. I just wanted him to be kind of like a nondescript, like random renegade to fight Hass and his warband uh, if he ends up showing up. And he did show up in the first game that you saw in the Let's Play this week. Then I need to paint out my classic anvil for the uh, Steam Vents of the Undercity um, mission, where basically there's a sewer dragon wandering around. It's like an underground kind of like hive mission. And the only bad guys that can show up is Ruffian, so I don't have to do anything else except for this guy, basically. Uh, and then there's these huge steam vents that end up exploding and making the area, like, super hard to navigate, so I'm pretty pumped for that. Uh, and then finally, this showed up in the mail this week. Um, I have, like, a few really sort of, like, I guess OG hobby heroes that are on the internet. One is Paul Shotton. He runs a blog called Shoeboxes... It's shoeboxes something. His, his like internet handle has always been shoebox. I'll link it in the video description. But he has been collecting and playing actually another game I'm going to show off in a minute um, called Pulp Alley. Uh, he's been playing with Rogue Trader Miniatures like since I basically started dinking around on the internet looking at, at pictures of old models. And he sent me one of my, I, he heard me mention that this is one of my Grail miniatures. This is a Rogue Trader Grinx or Gyrinx. I'm not really sure how you pronounce it. We always said Grinx. Um, it's a, it's in the beast during the rogue trader book and it's basically just a space cat. And I absolutely love this miniature. I've been trying to get my hands on one forever and he had a spare. Uh, and then he said the most GMG thing ever <laughs> he has in space cats <laughs> in his note to me. This was so cool. I'm so flattered and I'm really pumped to paint this. I'm going to paint up this week because this is like one of the rogue trader miniatures I've always wanted since I was a kid. It's going to go in Hess's war band as like the, whatever the animal companion is. Um, and it's just so kind of him to do that. So big, big thanks to Paul. I, the note is actually, I think even, even my favorite part. Um, cause that's, that's a, that's a joke that you can, you can only really get if you watch DMG. And that leads me to this weekend's painting project, which is going to be this. This is everything for death in the periphery. Now the Inquisitor and his little warband here, I actually have a lot more miniatures for. We did when the first Blanche Etsu models came out. God, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, maybe now in White Dwarf, uh, we actually did like a little hobby challenge, uh, at, like where I was working at Workshop to like do some conversions for it. And I converted up what I thought was a cool Inquisitor Warband. This is Absalom Knox, my um, Xenos Inquisitor, who's clearly been been trucking with the Necrons a whole bunch. He's based in uh, some Grey Knight bits, a bunch of Necron bits, like newer school ones. Um, and then his two lackeys, there's a Bounty Hunter. Uh, and then over here is this pilot who also has like a big like repeating rifle. And this is my warband for playing Death in the Reprovery. The three of these guys are going to show up and play through a solo mission against these planetary citizens. They've been they've been sent to rescue a uh, overlord, a planetary governor, who I'm going to use this uh, master of the fleet from the guard line for. And then he has to fight through. There's basically a mix of mutant citizens. I'm going to use these old um, scavies. These are metal fanatic era necromata scavies and um, like renegade workers who I'll use these uh, old Citadel cultist miniatures for. I'm painting all this up. This is basically the entire campaign's miniatures. I don't need anything else except for the terrain. Uh, and these 12 models will let me play like a three game scenario or three game like linked campaign of uh, Plant 28 that I'm pretty pumped about. So I'm going to try and do them up in like a blanchitsu y sketchy style. We'll see how that goes. Uh, I, I don't know. I've never really tried to like, I've, I've, I've dabbled, but I've never really tried to paint that way. So we'll see how that, um, how that works out. You can check that out next week. Of course, I gotta get this guy painted at some point next week too, to play through the, um, first big decapitation mission. He might show up on the way in. This is Torgelius the Chamberlain with, uh, the two like sort of like sketchy looking kitties that, um, will occasionally appear. I figured this, he's the like Lord of all the vermin. So I'd paint my, um, my strays at the same time to get them to get them ready to play with as well uh and and just like call that a single painting project but he's the except for radiker and the two last heroes he's the last of my cursed city minis he's the last like bad guy mini actually i need to paint and he's a nice model but he's kind of busy so i kind of saved him for last i've got this to work on next week too which is the pulp alley second edition star set and i played first edition actually because of paul's um blogging and mentioning of it to play rogue trader with to use like um whatever minis you want but the second edition star set comes with like dice and the rule book a quick start set two factions the dundee like um crew which are like all uh like sort of a indiana jones kind of riff and then minerva's uh, mercenaries who are sort of um a like evil team of like baddies basically to go and fight against i am pumped to paint these so some pulp minis this is a like totally free form you could play any era any generation uh play with one to four players 
and um, have like a high adventure game. And there's expansions for it with like weird stuff and mystical stuff as well uh, that I'm really excited about actually. So this was a classic I played a long time ago. Uh, now that the second edition's out, I'll be able to come back to it, which I'm pumped for. I'm gonna paint the star set and give it a go. I've also got this lovely um, action pack to paint up from Infinity, which is the uh, new Militarators one, which has some awesome new models. The new Infirmarer to uh, go with the one that comes in the code one box with the cool flag there. The Knight Commander, who's a new profile, kind of a leader of the Crow you get three crosiers. You can see them right here. They're kind of your new um, order sergeants, sort of. The Knight of the Sepulchre with his APHMG. He's a big, super heavy infantry guy. Uh, Hacker Santiago, who can also actually be a drop troop, which is kind of cool. And then um, a Knight of Justice, again, to kind of go with the... Um, one that came in code one and a new black fire with a heavy rocket this is a nice like bunch of link teams you have a ton of link options in here actually uh the croziers can link with the knight commander and then i believe the net of justice the santiago the black friar and the infirmarer are all like wild card or specifically linked with croziers as well and the guy doesn't link is the uh the big boy the the knight of the hoist of Balker. and i kind of wish he did because him and the um the Santiago Knight would actually be a really cool duo to like walk around. If you just had a duo option, it'd be super cool. Not that I'm complaining because almost everything in this faction links anyway. Uh, but this is about 270-ish points. Like it's almost a 300-point army. You throw in like a single model, uh, like a mercenary or just like an additional like Knight and or Joni, Baloney, and you're ready to rock. And then I also got my hands on this. Look at this. Look at the art in this. This is uh, Forbidden Psalm. It's a uh, one to two player like cooperative adventure game where you build a party of five bad guys. Um, I'm gonna do a full GMG review of this and you play through a series of linked adventures working for a mad wizard uh, locked in a um, giant tower. But like the art, it's the, this, it looks like flipping through like the liner notes in a metal album. It's so cool. Um, the mad wizard hides in his castle only appearing to those willing to undertake his bidding. And it has everything from like uh, scenarios, a campaign setting to, and this is I think my favorite part uh, at the back here. It has a random warband generator, which I might actually do. It's like to do your modeling and then you generate your warband first and then model second. I might actually do that, but I'm pumped to give this a go. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below to get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirt, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Death Ray Designs, um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible, uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else, and most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, uh, big thanks to everyone past, future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.